it's just nice, you know, taking a 600 year break by dwelling and gazing at the stars that are blocked by the ceiling. What's your favourite Pokemon? Who are you and why have you got a penguin mask on? My favourite Pokemon's Piplup. Oh, right, I totally understand now. Piss off. What's your favourite duck Pokemon? I'm trying to be lazy, go away. What's your favourite Pokemon to be drawn hentai of? Haunter? That was sarcasm, by the way. I have a friend that wants to talk to you about a certain list that you're gonna do as you see him coming through the door now. Oh. I'll make that list now. Hi, I'm KB. So really this should have been a Halloween video, but I got drunk, so I had to spell check everything after I was done. And it was quite hard to see out of this costume. But every day in the Pokemon world means death, and now that it's in 3D, blood has never looked so much like tomato ketchup like on Mortal Kombat Annihilation for the PSP. So that question resides with what we've taken so far from the series and understood how Pokemon can become contributions to the Cordyceps fungus and how soon they might make a snail zombie version of Parasect. And along with the ooze of Bayonet's cursed energy, I can safely say that I have completely spoiled my previous two lists. And while I can say that Gen 6 may have new surprises in store for the Pokemon series, there might be some not exactly explained up to scratch from older generations, so this list is not going to cover any Pokemon from my past two lists. Which is why it's other disturbing Pokemon. If I keep doing the same Pokemon and again and again, it's gonna feel like we're stuck in purgatory. So, one per evolution line, stats do not matter. Just because I personally find them disturbing does not mean that I generally hate them. And this list may be a bit over-exaggerated to the point that it's completely fake. Let's begin. Dag. You know what Algae can do to a boat rudder, right? Just choke it out. It's Kelp, you moron! You know what Dragalgi can do to a boat? Their poison is strong enough to eat through the hull of a tanker, and they spit it indiscriminately at anything that enters their territory. So you know now not to piss off a Dragalgi. I guess they eat the tank to become even more of a tank themselves. Well, I guess it's true. I mean, they have high special defense if you've ever paid attention to the super training stuff. Tales are told of ships that wander into seas where Dragalgi live, never to return. What the hell? Why does there have to be a ghost story involved in this? Well, I guess Pringles were just a phase, weren't they? Time to bring in the big torpedo that starts to grow on you. It's even described as the Mock Kelp Pokemon, which is why there is currently a Plants vs. Zombies underwater game as we speak. It's just strange how I can victimize an entire tank, but then fall victim to my fishing rod. No! Okay, fairy types. Yeah, the odd parallel to dark types, which can't really be seemingly disturbing in the slightest, but I'll call this one more of an Alakazam hypothesis if you've ever watched my first video I did on this. It emits a scent that enraptures those who smell it. This fragrance changes depending on what it's eaten. What have us been eating shit? I'm sorry, but this you can have no solid number on the list because it can have a scale from one to infinity of how gross the smell can actually be. Without knowing what it eats, what exactly am I supposed to think? Even if it eats something like a mouse, that mouse is gonna rot and smell, with the acid breaking it down, so eventually, Spirit Sea is gonna smell like droppings. When people say you are what you eat, I can say I'm a shrimp. Five foot eight. So, at this point, I actually may as well leave in the overly dressed aromatees as well, just to show that there may be a connection between the two Pokemon within the evolution line. It devises various scents, pleasant and unpleasant and emits scents that its enemies dislike in order to gain an edge in battle. Yeah, I told you it was shit, didn't I? It could even be rotten candy floss for all we know. It goes even further to say, its scent is so overpowering that unless a trainer happens to really enjoy the smell, he or she will have a hard time walking alongside it. Yeah, can I have my Jessica Rabbit back, please? At least, uh, she won't be a guilty pleasure. Just like people getting Gardevoir pregnant by giving a man a uterus. Oith. I believe since the day this Pokemon was revealed, it took people by storm and rage. Oh my god, they may as well draw eyes on a chair and call it a Pokemon. Oh yeah, that could be an idea. Floating chairs in ghost stories and evolving into tables and cupboards with some plates and cutlery. The holes resemble eyes. Alright, I'm getting a bit sidetracked, but the real beef is this. 
Apparently, this Pokemon is born when a departed spirit inhabits a sword. It attaches itself to people and drinks their life force. If anyone dares to grab its hilt, it wraps a blue cloth around that person's arm and drains that person's life energy completely. I guess it serves people right if they're gonna wanna be swinging swords around all the time. You're gonna get got. But it's like reverse psychology, the wielder should usually get the power. Not the sword who doesn't even have any bloody legs. But instead grows another blade and then a shield added to which it then selects a king to wield it. So in other words, it becomes a bit more humane and full of honor. A bit classier than Furfro. Oh my dear Furfro, my beloved Furfro. Scythe. It's true. The myth of the legendary and infamous Goth now has psychic powers which could destroy us all! They use hypnosis to control people and Pokemon. Tales of Gotharita leading people astray are told in every corner. Bloody hell, the rumors people tell about Goths. You know, th there is three sides to every story. Your side, their side, and the truth. Remember that, you fakers. According to many old tales, it creates friends for itself by controlling sleeping children on starry nights. Okay, you can't make people be your friends. I never used any threats for any of my friends, right? That's right, Kieran. Can you put the gun down now? Shut up! Listen, you can hypnotize anyone. Maybe not. But leave children out of this, okay? Just because they're asleep doesn't mean that it's okay. It's not even okay if they're awake either. In fact, you're just very lonely. It's a very disturbing kind of lonely, so I'm just going to steer clear of you, so please, go away. Cool. All hail the Great Cthulhu! It wields the most compelling hypnotic powers of any Pokemon, and it forces others to do whatever it wants. It lures prey close with hypnotic motions, then wraps its tentacles around it before finishing it off with digestive fluids. All hail the Great Hentai Cthulhu! Malamar is pretty much eradicating prey the only way possible, so... Why not talk about how Medusa over here can not just spray acid instead of the extremely sharp beak that squids usually have, and just make the enemy do whatever the hell the creature wants it to do. Like I always say, this is Pokemon, and surprises are going to lurk around every corner when you think all a Pokemon does is four moves and that's it. And that is my disclaimer. Plus, Malamar's look just adds potential trouble to who may be curious as to finding out his whole origin. As much as it's shocking to know that this Pokemon works much better in battle with physical stats with its kind of typing, it's nice to know that it can produce the physical pain necessary for its terrifying survival methods. Pimp. You know they did the whole dragon-type mascots for two generations in a row? And I'm glad this generation got back to a new formula as such. And while X and Y aren't the most creative names compared to Diamond and Pearl, or Black and White, no, not even, they had some very interesting origins for their mascots. The Pokemon of Life and Eternity, Xerneas, the Pokemon of Death and Destruction, Yvetal, and the Pokemon of Order, Zygarde, or Zygarde. But it's actually Yvetal I want to talk about. Now read these Pokedex entries with me, and tell me right to my face that this doesn't sound like a certain monster from the horror genre of movies. When this legendary Pokemon's wings and tail feathers spread wide and glow red, it absorbs the life force of all living creatures. That's not the kicker though. When its life comes to an end, it absorbs the life energy of every living thing and turns into a cocoon once more. Jeepers creepers, man! You got that right. It's more of the eerie tone set in the sentence, once more. It's like a fantasy horror novel that George Double R. Martin wrote for shits and giggles, in which you never know what's coming. The Pokemon itself has always reminded me of Avion from Shadow of the Colossus, and to think that's a sword I would need at that moment in time. Frighteningly enough, we don't know when this Pokemon's life ends. Could be a while, but either way, somebody's gonna get zapped with an awesome sounding move such as Oblivion Wing. The only relief is that awesome theme music playing in the background, to which I can't say that we've had such a great sounding theme for Legendary since Generation 3. Fine, Generation 4. Petwa. There's two Pokemon that people have pointed out to me in the past, which are the Dreads of Ice themselves, Glalie and Frostlass. And since they both share the same evolution tree, why not make them love each other in this very disturbingly romantic spot? Glalie has the ability to freely control ice, 
For example, it can instantly freeze its foe solid. After immobilizing its foe in ice, this Pokemon enjoys eating it in leisurely fashion. Well, that's quite normal. Yeah. Now, I've said before that the foe probably can't feel pain while they're frozen, unless they're an ice type. Good luck with that. Imagine you see a defenseless Pidgey in a block of ice while Hannibal Lecter is playing Ring Around a Rosie around it. Can I have a Coke, please? Uh, yeah, you want ice with that? Yeah. And you. What? Back when Generation 3 was revealed, I was pretty surprised that Glalie was not also a dark type. I mean, it has that look, along with the appearance of only having a top row of teeth to munch away at his foes with. Not even prey, just foes. Anyway, on to Frostlass. It freezes prey by blowing his minus 58 degree Fahrenheit breath. It is said to then secretly display its prey. Legends in snowy regions say that a woman who is lost on an icy mountain was reborn as Frostlass. Holy fuck! Watch out, Mr. Tumnus! How can you be reborn if you're a ghost? I mean, wouldn't being born be alive, but you're dead? So, kind of contradict with each other? Immortality, maybe? <sighs> Mystery, man. Pokemon's full of them. Essentially, you know that a guy who has a collection of human finger bones and rabbit feet, Frostlass is the embodiment of that. And that will definitely run a chill down your spine. Ah! <laughs> It's just an amazement to see that they put the effort in to make sure both evolutions had some sick fantasy to sort of live for and that maybe Glalie is currently within Frostlass's lair and eating away at the monuments that Lady Frostlass has displayed. Think about that very scene for a second. Hmm. Yeah. Three. Okay, stupid name like Pumpkaboo aside, it's Evolution Gorgeist in which its name revealing Poltergeist is in a nutshell an insanely fucked up ghost. Singing in eerie voices, they wander town streets on the night of the new moon. Anyone who hears their song is cursed. I came in like a wrecking ball. It enwraps its prey in its hair-like arms. It sings joyfully as it observes the suffering of its prey. You know how it's singing? And how it's also orange? Well... Kubrick would be proud. I'm thinking with every size, Gorgai's voice gets deeper, and deeper, and deeper, and deeper. And to think his pre-evolution is extremely caring by carrying wandering spirits to where they belong to move on, and then it turns into a fucking animal which is undead. Do you ever get that bloated feeling? That's what killed the human version of Gorgeist. Its typing feels kind of weird though, considering it can also be a mix-up of fire. If it really wants to, I mean, it's a could be a jacko lantern for oh well i suppose grass grows pumpkins and plants kill people so it's all good Die! the face of evil esper's eyes were stung by a bee drill do, 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 do. a psychic little kitty acting like a tiddly little titty woo yeah the organ that emits its intense psychic power is sheltered by its ears to keep power from leaking out. It has enough psychic energy to blast everything within 300 feet of itself, but it has no control over its power. I'm finally allowed to use this again! That was scary! Okay, the true aim of this entry is to say that Esper may look like a disturbed rundown cat with a few teenage problems, but is actually a triggered bomb waiting to happen. Not even the dark types will withstand this amount of power. It's like how a wimpy cut could turn into a blood infection and kill people, or how you shouldn't underestimate Yoda. Either way, its power can only be willfully suppressed when it evolves. But for now, prepare for the fallout. With all this moaning and groaning, and this entry will leave us bawling. Mm. All bark and no bite. Pun. These Pokemon are created when spirits possess rotten tree stumps. They prefer to live in abandoned forests. Why? That is the dumbest idea I have ever heard of. Shame on those spirited bastards. That's what they get for being as stiff as a stump. Ah. According to old tales, these Pokemon are stumps possessed by the spirits of children who died while lost in the forest. Can we, uh, just forget what I said? 
Oi! YouTube needs to forgive! Now, I don't know if this is actually more disturbing than Yamask, I mean, yeah. It's that thought of children dying with no escape from a forest and forever cherishing their bad experiences deep within where they are destined to stay forever. However, I could possibly turn around and say that this could be a possible connection to Aoki Kahara, which is a suicide forest in Japan where more than 500 suicides have been reported there in the last 60 years. Now, I'm not saying kids kill themselves, but it is a forest to which people can get easily lost within. And I could just be splitting hairs, but there is a lot of Japanese mythology in Pokemon, and Aoki Kahara has a strong association with demons in Japanese mythology. To where Ubisute may have occurred there in the 19th century, which is the act of leaving an elderly person in a desolate place to die, of either dehydration, starvation, or whatever else. The forest is also said to be haunted by the Yure, aka angry spirits, of those who are left there to die. Now it does say elderly people, but I suppose to make the story more fresh and spooky, they decided to go with children instead. And plus, what could be the number of reasons as to how they got lost in the forest? So I could be about 8% right, very positive. Nah, really, I think it's based off the Deku Deku mixed with Link. Well, there is Trevenant. Trevenant traps people who might harm the forest in the forest, so they can never leave by controlling the movement of the trees that apparently move. Kids could be using chainsaws without their parents' permission, or... So that's linked with the possible links with dead children and demonic possession. Just leaves a whole other mystery in the world of Pokemon. Now, I want you to tell your friends about this theory. With references, of course. Credit where credit is due. Tell the world! Just tell the world. Now, while I give honorable mentions after I've made my number one, so you can understand why I didn't actually include some Pokemon that you thought might have been on here, or why I didn't put them on here. So now, um, first Pokemon, which is to do with slugs and gooey blah blah blah, is Sligo slash Gudra. Now, when Gudra hugs you, you get covered in goo. But I broke out of the cynical cage and Gudra is such a pseudo-legendary cutie pie that has melted in the microwave. Sligu's a sluggish thing, but it hardly looks anything like this. But it is blind because its eyes devolved, and that's a bit weird. Alright, to be honest, I've talked a lot about draining bodily fluids, and to put Beautifly on the list would just mean more redundancy, so that's why I didn't put Beautifly on here. The pain from Handoom's flames never go away, just like Amaterasu from Naruto, but instead it's just the pain that doesn't go away, not the flame. And Pokemon such as Delibird, who gets caught and results in the baby starving to death, waiting for their mother, as well as Darumaka, whose droppings are used for warmth, just concern the entries, which is more of a disturbing thought, no disturbing Pokemon per se. But now at the end of this list, I think one of the major questions is, do I think that Svantump is more disturbing than Parasect? No. Parasect has one of the most disturbing realistic origins as the Cordyceps virus Fungus. is a real thing. And the way it takes over the Pokemon and the way I loved Parasect as a kid, and probably still do, I still consider it the most disturbing Pokemon, personally. You're welcome to uh, find whatever you want disturbing, same as I, and uh, I'm gonna leave it there. So finally, I think I've covered everything when it comes to disturbing Pokemon. I don't think there's anything else that I need to talk about that I haven't gone over, and if I haven't gone over it, it probably will leave a small fraction of the actual video that I will cover in the actual video that will leave it 2 minutes 11 seconds long, so I'm just gonna leave it there. Any other kind of Pokemon video will just be any normal kind of video, badass Pokemon, whatever. And there is a special project that I will be making for this um, sort of thing. So you may notice that this is the start of Season 2. Season 2 is just basically saying that I'm happy with what I've been doing up to this point, that I want to kind of refurbish and just go, right, this is the new standard I'm setting. So it's kind of like kind of that mentality sort of thing. So anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, if you like my content, be sure to uh, follow my Twitter, stalk me on Facebook, and stalk me on Tumblr also, if you want to look at my blogs and stuff. And um, pretty much besides from that, check out my other channel, check out vocal covers, other stuff like that, and uh, that's fine. Lights out! If you know, I even feel a little cruiser crew now if we call each other by nicknames. You don't really call each other by nicknames, you just, the nicknames just come. So can I call you k Maestro? No, that sounds stupid. Only Stifler can have that name. No, no way, he's like, okay for sure. Don't call me short, 5 for 8 is a natural height, okay?
The psychic little kitty Acting like a Tiddly little titty Ooh.